Joining us to discuss the summit from the African perspective is James Shikwati, founder and director of the Inter-Region Economic Network, a think tank that helps to enhance the quality of life for people in Africa. He joins us from Kenya. And with a Chinese perspective is Dr. Yan Wong, a visiting professor at the George Washington University School of Business right here in Washington. Thanks to both of you for joining us. James, let me start with you. We just heard from Amina Lassam Ali. She is the head of the African Union mission to the United States, talking about the summit. She's saying this meeting will open up a new chapter in our relations. She talked about enhanced cooperation, a new platform of cooperation. Is this the beginning of a new chapter, or is this just a talk shop? What, what, what has the summit achieved? Yeah, well, I wouldn't really call it a new chapter, but I think uh, what we are seeing here is a reviewed uh, approach. Uh, because, you know, initially, the United States' relations with Africa was pegged largely on trying to improve the governance infrastructure within the continent. But now what we see, the message is focused more on investment, on issues of uh, economy and trade, and then there's also the aspect of security. So this, to me, is more or less a reviewed initiative, but not necessarily a new chapter. Uh, Dr. Wan, if we look at Chinese investment in Africa, Chi China overtook the United States uh, as Africa's largest trading partner, and that happened in 2009. Now, Chinese investment at the moment is $209 billion. U.S. investment is just around $90 billion. So is the U.S., in a sense, trying to play catch up here? I think so. Um, there is saying that uh, never late, um, better late than never. So um, I think Africa is a vast continent with one billion people and a um, lot of uh, sectors, uh, infrastructure needs to be developed. So there is plenty of uh, opportunities for businesses from many countries, including the U.S. and China, emerging market. Um, China is taking an approach called combining trade, investment, and aid together. Uh, this is different from the Western countries' approaches. And um, so far, we have seen a lot of uh, development uh, impact on the ground. How is it different? Because, you know, one of the complaints we hear about Chinese investment is that China is merely exporting natural resources and minerals, for instance, from Africa and is not contributing much to the development of Africa. That criticism wasn't said in so many words, but it came from President Obama when he made that speech to African leaders. He said, the United States is not merely interested in uh, mining your minerals and getting your natural resources. We're interested in the people as well. It was a mild swipe at China. Yes, um, that's unfair. Actually, China invested a lot in Africa's uh, much-needed power sector, uh, including 9 gigawatts of hydropower in uh, African countries. And China invested a lot in the manufacturing, um, manufacturing sectors. One example is the Huajian shoe-making uh, shoe company. They uh, opened up a um, production line in uh, 2012, and now they are employing um, 3,000 local workers and exporting shoes to the U.S. and the EU market. Okay, James, uh, when we look at uh, U.S. investment in Africa, and I'm wondering how much of a commitment there is from the United States to investment in Africa, because we look at the figures, it has actually been going down. In 2011, the investment was 125 billion. 2012, 99 billion. 2013, 85 billion. So it's going in the other direction. Yeah, actually, uh, that informs part of the reason why there's this uh, first US Africa summit. I think uh, what President Obama has done is to try and elevate the Africa in the minds of Americans, because it seems like the American investors were sort of losing touch with Africans. And I think uh, what this summit is trying to do is to reignite the connection uh, between uh, Africa and, and United States of America. But uh, what we are keen to watch is, you know, talking about China, America, in Africa, we'll notice that the, the Chinese, in most cases, when they are doing their deals with Africa, it will be the Chinese government signing deals with African governments and making it happen. 
but uh, there's a sort of a difference uh, from what we see today and of course yesterday where the uh, president has been putting on the front line mostly American investors to be the ones to sign the deals and to make the proclamations in terms of how many billions they would wish to pump into Africa. So I think uh, what we are seeing here is uh, a push for the uh, uh, American private capital uh, to flow to Africa. And uh, of course, uh, from the Chinese side, the push uh, has been the government capital, you know, coming to, uh, to the African side. But where we have the challenge is whether Africa is prepared for this, because uh, we should not forget that this is not the first time uh, international community or external powers have come to Africa with good messages, but in, in the final analysis, it always ends up to be on the losing side. So this is what we need to watch out for. Dr. Wang, how would you characterize the Chinese involvement in Africa? Is it a partnership? Do we see two-way trade? Yes, um, we, um, Justin Lin and I, we did a lot of research on this topic. We consider that uh, China and African countries are partners and they are teammates in climbing the same mountain of structural transformation because we are in a similar level of development and we have uh, labor intensive industries and also agricultural it's industries. Cut, right? uh, therefore, uh, the Chinese um, um, technology is more suitable, more appropriate for African countries to learn and to adopt. And uh, actually, a lot of uh, Chinese uh, labor intensive uh, factories are moving, relocating to uh, neighboring countries and to Africa. This is a great opportunity yeah. for creating jobs and in Africa. Suppose. James, if we look at investment in Africa and who benefits from it, uh, it seems in many cases that it's only a small elite, uh, a group of leaders or a group of well-connected uh, people, people connected uh, politically, uh, who benefit from this. I mean, let's take two examples. We look at Nigeria, the world's ninth largest exporter of oil, yet 60% of the country lives in extreme poverty. 80% of the country's young people are unemployed. In South Africa, the richest country on the continent, 20% of people live in extreme poverty, 45% in moderate poverty. So who is all this investment helping? Uh, in terms of the question of who is benefiting from the investment, uh, I think first we have to make it clear that uh, we are coming from a mindset where Africa has been always transferring responsibility to others. And that mindset in itself makes it extremely difficult for Africa to be able to you know, benefit uh, from the kinds of engagement it has with other countries. I mean, if you looked at the example of China, it is where it is because it capitalized on investments from outside to build its economy to become one of the largest economic powers in the world. So I think uh, what Africa can get from both the U.S. and China's uh, uh, you know, involvement is for Africa to learn from both sides and see what kind of strategies they put in place to be able to grow and support their populations. Because we are coming from a background where the leadership has been, in most cases, disconnected from the African people. And I think that's why the discussions here have to focus on Africa going forward. Dr. Wong, are we going to see growing competition between China and the United States for influence in Africa? And is that necessarily a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. Um, I think China yeah. and the uh, US have uh, different uh, comparative advantages. China is very good in manufacturing sector, in construction, in uh, infrastructure, but uh, the US is excellent in healthcare, in education, in high technology. Uh, we can potentially work together in uh, developing a, a country in the African development. However, uh, it's um, the country would have to uh, compromise and work together. Um, and I think uh, uh, the country can play a uh, complementary uh, role and in each uh, different aspect of the development. And uh, in the end, it is hopeful to have a win-win-win situation. 
Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. James Shikwadi, Dr. Yang Wong, thank you very much for joining us. We are going to take a break right now. Coming up, we talk to the Deputy Assistant Secretary at the U.S. State Department about the significance of the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit from the United States' point of view. That's all coming up on The Heat. Stay with us.